Not much of a blooming alley, is it? <laughs> Thank you for clicking on this video. Well, my blooming alley is a bit of a tight squeeze, so we are gonna go to the east side and I'm gonna show you what is in bloom today. Seeing as it is an overcast day, it is a good day to look at some blooms because then nothing gets washed out, neither by the sun nor the facade. Gotta get the silver lining in there when the days are overcast, so thank you for being here. I hope to see you on the east side. Let's start off with a clanger. <laughs> CG Roebling, Blue Indigo. Look at this. All right, so I only just featured her recently in a video because we've got perfection. <laughs> and then she had a bud that came out on the second piece, there's two of them in here, that wasn't formed in a sheath. Look. Yes, just a moment of silence there because look. No sheath, no bud blast perfection perfection so if i am a little bit dubious about a virus possibly being in one of these two pieces i do believe that at least maybe one of them is healthy not entirely sure who cares we've got it looming that is sensational oh so so happy cartwheels around the patio <laughs> And the fragrance is so intense. I mean, I had three perparatas in bloom earlier in this season and I had to get close to smell them this year. <sighs> this one? No, 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 no. I don't have to get close. This one is just intensely fragrant of the most beautiful, elegant roses that you can conjure up in your imagination. Just awesome. Three blooms, the two pieces, one without a sheath and then two developed in a sheath. Now, let's see what happens in 2024. <laughs> Never a dull moment in this hobby, eh? And nothing about this video is dull either, in my opinion. So if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and give it a like already for my CG rolling because, I mean, come on, how can you not? <laughs> Thank you so much. So we're going to go from the super, super large blooms to the Dinky tiny little blooms. <clears throat> so tiny. Hello, camera. Wake up. There we go. This is my little Rapiculus Lelia Lelia Fornery. <laughs> oh, please do me the honor. Please. Look at that. Look at those little petals. She looks. Ah. Uh, Maybe I should put her on the table, but look at that. She has developed a little bit of a pink blush right there. You can see underneath that sepal right there. A little pink blush right at the tips underneath them since I featured her on my community post. And this is the orchid. XXL2. Itty bitty mini cutie patootie. Very happy. First time bloomer. <laughs> Celebration. Not a first time bloomer, but this is my Bretonia Shiloh crossed with Rinconidia Marie L. The first time with three spikes though. Amazing. I was having a bit of a moan earlier on when I showed the spikes because the first one had already started to open. They fade very quickly in my opinion. Now that is just me probably having a little bit of a petty moment here. And I would have loved to have all the spikes pristine all at the same time. But again, I'm just being petty. But to have three spikes, these two opened up pretty well together. So I have a gorgeous display of at least these blooms all looking fresh with still a single bud to go. I do enjoy, however, how these blooms fade. I mean, it's uh, pretty exotic, isn't it? Very Ancelia Africana-like when they fade. And this time I had two going upside down. <laughs> Even though the direction of the light was always maintained. Hakuna Matara, because check this out. Isn't this gorgeous? I got this one from Fernanda Nacimiento Orchids and Succulents. And I am always very, very happy to be able to show orchids, report back that they're doing very well. She is, as an exception, potted in pumice and self-watering because I had the media on hand. I don't like to have things lying around in storage that I'm not going to be using. So I used pumice for her and clearly she absolutely loves it. I had some deficiencies last year while she was adapting, acclimating. 
but they are long gone. Thank you, Fernando, for this gorgeous orchid. I'm enjoying her very, very much. I don't detect a fragrance from her. If I wanted to dig deep, I would say something along the lines of sweet plastic, but oh my goodness, you really have to stretch your imagination to actually identify that fragrance. But with so many things to attract pollinators, so many details in the blooms, who needs a fragrance, right? <laughs> Another orchid that really doesn't need introducing, <laughs> nor does it need a fragrance. But anyway, I'm going to say this is Dendrobium hibiki. I've got two pieces. She was divided. If you want to check that video out, I'm going to leave up the card right now so that you can find the video because it was a radical chop and prop. <laughs> Here we are. She didn't care. Not one bit. Couldn't be bothered and bloomed as if it was all one big pot still. Just remarkable. And on a day like this that is overcast, this is probably the best way to feature this orchid. Otherwise, your eyes would get all weepy because of the psychedelic colors of this hot pink with this incredible bright, bright orange. This orchid is a staple in my collection. Absolutely adore her. And on some, some parts, I'm already starting to get new growths as I turn and don't see a single one here. <laughs> I did see new growths. Maybe it's this one. Ah, there we go. Oops, blooms in the way. There we go, there's a new growth. So it's starting now to get its new growth. So I've been very, very diligent with my garlic alcohol on both of these pieces because there was a little bit of a dendrobium fungus going around, I think think. I can't identify it. I can't treat it with anything heavy. So this orchid has had a paint job and a paint job and a paint job because I really don't want to perpetuate whatever it is that it was afflicted with. Normally I have a lot more leaves but I've been plucking them off because uh-uh, whatever is going on, whatever happened, probably the high humidity early spring when the temperatures weren't exactly quite warm enough and I had her outside all of these things could have played a part. But anyway, <laughs> fingers crossed the new growths do not come out nasty. So even after this video, I'm going to paint her again because, hey, she's not on the shelf. Another first time bloomer on the patio. This orchid came from Insa Orchids and ADD back in 2022. Identified recently as Miltonia Honolulu Binottii and hoo -hoo, doing the hula around the patio with regards to this orchid. Super happy because I lost a sunset to rot and I was thinking, yeah, I'm not going to replace it. Been there, done that. I was never really partial towards the sunset and I can't explain why, but once I had her, I loved her and I wanted to keep her, <laughs> but when she rotted out, I thought, well, maybe it's just, you know, it's not meant to be. So I never replaced her, but this is a wonderful surprise, a variation of the sunset, so to speak, but with more of an exotic tropical vibe. Look at this. E so good. But here's one thing, three spikes as a first time bloomer, <laughs> credit to the orchid for being so vigorous. So, you know, I got the little pseudobulbs. I got a new growth starting. That was this one back here, right there. Little growth. And then, boom, right out of the gate, it shot out three more growths. It was awesome. And she lives outside in the blooming alley all year round. Yep, during the winter months and everything gets a lot of light, but <laughs> also quite the cold temperatures. So, as far as I'm concerned, some of the blooms here are gorgeous on this first spike that started to open. But there was a little bit of a mealybug issue. And for that reason, I already removed the nastiest looking bloom. So you can see there's like a black spot right there. That was a pity. But I took one bloom off straight away just because who needs to have a nasty looking bloom on spikes? And there are more mealies. Yeah, you got to be careful with these. Okay. I'm going to get my garlic alcohol while I remember and I'll be right back. But you can see in these bracts right here, there we go. That's what you need to watch out for, peeling those bracts back. You don't get to chew on my orchid, no way. I'm always happy to share, you know, I'm sharing all my blooms with you. <laughs> Meanwhile, 
If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and let me know because I put you on a list and I have a Blooms For You series. So that's where I share my blooms. I dedicate my blooms to everybody that is supporting the channel by way of commenting, subscribing, and it would be wonderful to know that you have subscribed to the channel. If you have not yet, please go ahead and do so. And then I'll put you on the list and then there will be blooms for you. So I don't mind sharing my blooms with you, but not with mealybugs. That's not happening. There's so much vegetation around. We don't have to be that generous when it comes to our blooms. I have not detected a fragrance on this orchid yet at all. But you know what? All I can say is if you bloom like this for me, it's okay that you don't have a fragrance. I'm excited to see what she's going to do next because <laughs> expectations are high. She gave me three new growths during the winter of 22 and 23. Um, hello, are we going to get three more? Wouldn't that be awesome? Because then she's going to be filling her pot rather quickly and we can bump her up. Amazing. Love it. She's not even a big orchid, but goodness me, what a giver. Love this. Look who's back. <laughs> Fro Catavola Golden Peacock. Can you believe it? How long has it been since we have seen these blooms on the patio? Do you remember? For me, it just seems like ages because this orchid used to be in bloom over and over and over continuously when I started my channel in 2020. And then, of course, she got divided, repotted and had certain <coughs> surgeries done to herself. Now I've got three pieces in this single pot and it took a while for her to recover, but recover she has. And yes, well, it's an overcast day. And even though it's overcast, I cannot really see the screen. I hope everything is in focus, but it's on a day like this that her true orange color pops and it's glorious. This is an even better angle because now we can also see all the little things that are going on in the background. Isn't that beautiful? Everything that is not in focus. Oh, I love it. I wish the CG Roebling were a little bit lower so we could appreciate her as well. But anyway, I am back to, well, not quite six blooms, but I have five. Okay, I'll take it. But <laughs> we're not done yet. I've got more blooms coming in the back here. So that's why she's not featured on the lower shelf of my blooming alley just yet, because of course I would like to have the direction of the light coming from the right direction so that we get another spike with a presentation like this. And the bloom duration of a Procatabola peacock is relatively long, so both spikes should be in bloom at the same time at some point. Yay for Golden Peacock. Welcome back to the Blooming Alley. And it's so good to have you looking so beautiful. Uh, while it doesn't look like much, <laughs> I still have some blooms left on my Epidendrum Multiforme crossed with Capricornu. Yes, some are fading, but she has been gracing the cul-de-sac of my blooming alley for the longest time. And even on an overcast day, it's better to see her because we can see the green and the white. And there should be a pink blush on the tip there. Unfortunately, as the bloom ages, yeah, that's gone. But I thought I would show her anyway. Didn't get around to showing her much this season. And I thought, well, you know what? Even though you are yellowing and I've picked some blooms off, <sighs> I do apologize for not featuring you a little bit more. But again, blooms for you. Coming right up at some point in time, she will feature in much, much greater detail. This beautiful spectacle that reminds me of a bottle brush. <laughs> is my Panarica Prismartocarpa. There is 41 blooms represented on this single spike. Isn't it just beautiful? I did a spotlight video, a care guide video on this orchid just recently as well. Oh, I'll link that into the description because look at the size of the orchid. <laughs> this spike is easily 60 centimeters tall. And she stands proud, even though at the beginning I had some issues. She was weaving her way because the light of the blooming alley comes either from the south or the west. So the spike itself didn't know exactly where to go. And I tried to guide it. Eventually it found its mojo. And this is really now obsolete. I just didn't want to bang the buds up against a wall or something like that when it came to flushing this orchid. But oh my goodness, in this light. In this light, we can really appreciate the details of the blooms. I'm not normally one to zoom in. I'm normally the kind of person that captures images and inserts them 
simply because of how my light works. But now, with an overcast day, look at that. Every little structure of these blooms are just pristine perfection. You know how I was talking about other blooms, how I'm not turning the orchid yet towards the blooming alley because I would like them to open according to the direction of the light. There are some spikes though, it doesn't matter what direction the light comes from, they will bloom uniformly all around. I studied architecture and when I see a spike like this, I look at the structure, I look at the architecture and I love the precision here absolute precision. It's hard for me to, yeah, well, I'm geeking out, but anyway, beautiful blooms. <laughs> no fragrance though. I don't get a fragrance out of this one that I can even dig deep and find something, but she is gorgeous and super long lasting. The family photo of the east side. <laughs> My little one here though, come on. No, you're getting drowned out. Let me see if we can see you there. <laughs> Can we see her? She is so small. Look at this. Oh, baby. Anyway, I think you understand why um, we weren't doing this in the actual blooming alley because tight squeeze and <laughs> we wouldn't have been able to get that close to the blooms. And I hope that despite the light that everything was in focus. Having said all that, but wait, there's more. Just a tiny little bit more to take this gorgeous spectacle in and we shall venture around the patio because <laughs> I must. We have a little flush of blooms from my Garciana Alba here. Sorry, do that again. Prostechia Garciana Alba. This is typical for her, but her main blooming is around February. But it's always nice to get some blooms coming just when the season starts to end. And boy, does this orchid need some work. I mean, as in taking her out of that pot and chopping her up and rejuvenating her. This is something I am dreading, but you know what? There's always 2024, right? She is just, I think she grew, <laughs> I'm not kidding, about 150 new growth. Not many of them got enough hydration because of their climbing attitude. She is in a semi-hydroponic setup with Akadama. I mean, yeah, and when the roots don't reach the media straight away, it, yeah, the orchid just, you know, struggles. But still, there's a, probably another 150 growths on the way right now. And I can see them all in the little nooks and crannies down there. That's why I'm, if, oh, if I'm going to do this project, I'm going to dread it. I'm going to take a massive orchid and decimate her. <laughs> oh, yikes. But anyway, enjoying the blooms while they're here. Eventually she'll be inside and then we get a big flush, hopefully, if they are not impeded by the lack of hydration, seeing as she is way up over the media now. Hopefully we get another great show in February of 2024. Yeah, dreading this one. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> this is my gorgeous Dendrobium antenatum, also a recent candidate for a spotlight and care video. Finally, we can also see the details of the blooms on this orchid because, yeah, the white blooms, the white facade, the sunshine, etc. Very, very difficult to get close without actually losing the entire structure, detail and perfection of this bloom as well. So she is here on the annex of the Deep South, flanked by Epidendrum schweinfortianum on the left and Aria hyacinthoides to the right. So I just wanted to show her to you again because these blooms are still going strong. If I feel as though I'm losing some blooms because they're yellowing right here, I'm not taking them off because seed pods in abundance. It's like picking tomatoes at the end of the season. I've got so many seed pods, six. That's a lot of seed pods on one orchid, but this orchid has been a joy. Very heavy on the honeysuckle fragrance, even on an overcast day. What's not to like? Overcast days are also fabulous for filming yellows. <laughs> Uncidesa sweet sugar. Look at this spike. The orchid herself, I'm not too happy with. Uh, I don't like all the spotting on the foliage. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's nothing to do with fertilizing or anything like that. So might have to be a little bit more aggressive with some things in 2024 to protect new growths but they're all coming out marked spotted and unfortunately not looking so nice but this season she was put on her cork mount so i'm hoping that maybe whatever it is that is afflicting this orchid will go away because the mount is fresh anyway 
Look at this spike. Best spike since I've received her from Insta Orchids and ADD. Nice and long. I got me some branching and lots of little dancing ladies in bloom. Gorgeous little orchid. Very thrilled to have her. Let's see if we can solve the problem of the spotting. Because when she's not in bloom, it is a distraction. While she is in bloom, we focus on the blooms. And another thing I would like to see from her in 2024, if that's not asking too much, if she grows three new growths, then at least I would like to see two spikes at the same time, as opposed to just one. And I will be taking this spike off prematurely because of her recent mounting stress. I don't want her to exude so much energy. These blooms last a very, very long time and we're heading into troubling conditions. So it was nice to see the blooms. It's going to be nice to dedicate them. And then the spike is coming off. Here's an orchid that I did not feature while she was in her prime with 11 spikes. This is my Vanda No ID. Well, now I've only got eight spikes left that are blooming. Some are looking a little fresher than others, but all in all, this is my summer basket of fun. And I will be inserting the footage that I took while she was in perfect bloom because honestly, absolutely astounding. Every time I'm on the west side where she lives, when the sun is not blistering hot and pounding down on her, this orchid, the fragrance, when I'm misting my Chao Praia totem pole in the back, it is insane. The honeysuckle sweet fragrance, it just fills the air. A beautiful orchid to have around and I'm hoping that she is going to start growing new fans on the little skinny <laughs> stems of the older growths. I would like to see that fill out again a little bit more but it was wonderful to get 11 spikes this year and have her looking so, so gorgeous. The status quo has been re-established in the Blooming Alley and you can see that it would have been very, very difficult to showcase the blooms to you if I had left it this way. I could be an air hostess now saying that you've got your Prismatocarpa and the Epidendrum Hybrid to the front. You've got your Hibikis and the Honolulu Binotii and, well, I need my hands for this. Over to the right, <laughs> the Bretonia Shelob with the Marie L. <laughs> And then if you look above, if anything were to happen untoward, on the top shelf, we still have our golden peacock for those buds to open. So yeah, with all the hand motions of an air stewardess, <laughs> we are coming into land on this video just to show you everything that was in bloom today on an overcast day. Sincerely hope you enjoyed it. Would appreciate a like. I would also appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. Thank you so, so much for that support. And then in case of fog and any kind of emergency like that, please look at the little lines down below to the left and right of you, right through the center of the blooming alley, highlighted for your escape, <laughs> if you so choose to leave, is the CG Rolling Blue Indigo. And I can tell you from where I am stood, I can smell that rose fragrance. It doesn't even take a sunny day for her to be doing this. It is fabulous. Thank you everyone so, so much for watching. Once again, hope you enjoyed it. I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition. As per usual, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Thank you for flying with Ninja Orchids Bloom Air. <laughs>